Hello, hello! Welcome back to another day of X Infinity Origins Season One, and that was day ten already. Believe it or not, right? And uh, we did have a mid-season balance patch coming, which uh, is not live yet, but it was released earlier. Well, maybe about twenty. Two hours ago, so I did make a video on it as well. Do, do check it out to see uh, what has been changed, and also is this my view of you know how I think uh, things will be. Uh, and in this video, I'll probably talk a bit about that as well. And uh, it's just in general, uh, if you haven't watched that video, there's really not that much change. Uh, so meaning, uh, the meta will probably be quite similar to last season. Um, okay, so let's try, let's just see what's happening for today's. Uh, leaderboard and you can see Chuck Fresco climbing on top. Uh, wow, is this? I don't know where he came from. Is this like, um, yeah, is this? Um, probably got the. Uh, well, actually, one thing to note is that he is playing his favorite. Um, I guess the Rage Fury Beast team, but he's only using the Pendrin Scale. And okay, sure, there is a Pure Instinct, but it's still not too hard to get. So in a way. The runes themselves are actually pretty budget, uh, but of course the the good part it is in the the axes and the charms as well, right? So uh, that's what I would say is that rune is not everything. So if you have good charms and and the uh, good move sets, that also plays a part and allows Chuck Fresco to come in. And I know that Chuck is always a big fan of bulky team as well. So um, yeah, so that's why he actually has uh, two pendant scale. And you'll see how this works uh, later when I actually feature this. Um, but let's look at the rest as well. Um, so we do start to get some mystic runes, right? Uh, people start crafting the mystic runes already, so that's very, very strong. Uh, getting the mystic runes, uh, definitely giving uh, MK um, X friends some advantage. Um, and other than that, um, what do we do see a new name in that sense? And this is actually a pretty good sign that at least the typical aggro, you know, in this case, beast, uh, aqua, bird kind of team still exists on the highest level. So that's pretty good too. Um, and sustain is still there, so that's n uh, not bad. And uh, yeah, so uh, unfortunately, you don't really see that much poison now, and uh, you have to scroll quite far down. Okay, actually, twenty-two is not too bad. You, know, you do get some poison. Um, yeah, but you do see a lot more the Rage team and my feeling is that well the Rage Fury kind of beast team has been dominating the meta last season and there's really no reason for it to change um, because I was hoping that there will be more nerfed for that uh, particular archetype but didn't really happen um, so yeah especially for confident having the cleanse I think is a bit really a bit OP let's say sometimes you might just want a weak apply weak or apply other things uh, but they can just cleanse it and uh, which can be pretty annoying um, yeah so uh, let me just see what else is happening um, so I would say similar now interesting to see two birds uh, I would say but of course Raven tactics still very strong as well um, yeah so I would say meta is by and large pretty similar uh, but you do see a lot more people. Uh, wow, so there's now really a lot of people are getting up to Challenger. So m more than 100 basically. Uh, compared to yesterday, I think it's definitely fewer than 100. So a lot of people are really climbing up. And uh, hopefully you are all climbing up as well. Just because if everyone kind of moves up, then this, well, you will also move up. So yeah, more, more than 100, 50, 100. Wow, yeah. So probably uh, by tomorrow, to more than 200 people will be on the Challenger. Oh, of course, still quite early in the season, and uh, I would assume more and more people will get up to Challenger. And uh, okay, so actually, before I get into a Chuck's first score team, I would want to just look at uh, a bit of the um, runes and charms for today. And uh, okay, let's just look at the runes. Uh, let me refresh this uh, just because I last time I forgot. And you can see, yes, uh, Bloodlust, despite the nerf. Um, well, uh, actually, I would say relatively significant nerf. Uh, still the strongest, uh, or rather, is the, still the popular, uh, what most popular one for epic. Uh, and actually, I do want to see if there's any mystic going on. And uh, no, okay, I don't think anyone's. Yeah, at this point, people might be getting the mystic, but probably can't sell it yet. So yeah, mystic is not there yet. In terms of rare, yeah, really not much. Uh, even the pendulum scale, yeah, 
dropping to 11 uh probably will just continue to drop as more and more people is getting these and uh, while well you you really only need at most three right but realistically two at most um pendulum scale so um so that's why the rare ones probably not worth uh, crafting unless it's really a uh, not crafting i mean minting unless you do get a pendulum scale that you don't need um yeah but uh, epic yeah which is what we saw already so let's just see the charms and the charms let's also refresh and then let's see how it's like and uh okay let's just quickly look at the rare ones first because i don't really expect much in terms of the rare you do see the beast power one is a bit more expensive but the rest is really just nothing too exciting so that's why i was just focused okay let's just see the mystic i don't think anyone can sell a mystic at this point uh yep so it's really just the epic which is the interesting one and yeah as you can see the, the leaf pot a leafy pot pretty good um yeah, Reptile Vitality for the Poison build. Um, okay, the Sun and Moon are, uh, in general, dropping. And yeah, even Mask of Frenzy is already dropping to only 29. Uh, yeah, and the rest, okay, I would feel that it is just continue going to drop while people are selling these things. So, uh, yeah, the price is probably just going to continue dropping. Interestingly, the Beast Vitality is the, is it the most expensive uh yeah well i'm just strange enough but it is the most expensive uh charm and for good reasons is because the um the the rage beast team is just so strong and you do need a bit of bulk for your front to survive um yes yeah, and also pendulum scale beast is just so common that people do want this to make your front as bulky as possible so um yeah that is why as yes, if you do have one of these and do want to consider selling it then yeah i think it still can sell a good price but for the rest um it's really the price are definitely dropping even the bubble pace is you know, okay 26 still not cheap but like um yeah that, interesting not, not even as high as the beast charm vitality too so okay so this is for the runes and charms let's just actually see chuck's fresco team which i already opened up earlier and um yeah, do check out his uh, YouTube as well. Um, yes, I'm pretty sure he'll do a, a team review at some point. And uh, let's just see. Uh, okay, I do. I did open uh, the axes up already, so let's just check the back first. And uh, well, if you watch his uh, video on his um, previous team, it's basically very similar. I don't think there's any much uh, anything much that's changed. So the back, how it works is. Um, I would say little piece is a must for everything, so you can see, right? Little piece is a uh, is, is a staple, just because vulnerable is just so strong, especially for four turns. Um, and the interesting ones about the back is that it has a shell, meaning you can draw attacks uh, into the back, and if the opponent doesn't kill you, then uh, once you take some damage, you can do a Shiba to get four rage. Right, so that is pretty strong. Uh, again, confident, definitely a staple for. Uh, this kind of team, uh, but interestingly, only got one copy of Confident, which is very interesting compared to some other teams who have multiple ones. Um, and uh, yep, so Blyder also gaining rage as well. Uh, also deal with things like Mavis and other summons. That's like pretty good. Ronan, I think, is also a must in the sense that this is uh, so strong. You can do so much damage. Um, sometimes two hundred over plus if you get into uh, rage mode. As it's a very good synergy because in rage mode you do get an extra energy meaning you can play more attack cards or just in general use more energy um and imagine you use like four or even five energy before you play the ronin it's just going to be crazy damage let's just look at the mid and uh, let's see how the mid goes um the mid also has ronin um yep and the mid is a very typical one where you do get um the uh innocent lamp and cotton tail for those extra energy i think that's still a very important uh feature just because uh, every team you do want to do a bit of extra energy um yeah and then little branch is interesting for this because it does allow this to also get into free remote um which is not too common uh, but of course once you get a shiba up the the mid can also get into free remote um yeah, okay, I would say Death Mark is an interesting one because Death Mark can uh, 
accumulate and deal so much damage, especially when you have extra energy and your free remote giving you extra energy as well. And let's just see your front. So front, uh, you do have the fragile just to get rid of the not get rid, but like deal with the shield stuff and other Shiba. So it's very annoying. Um, to deal with because you have to hit it through the front right in order to you know uh, KO them but then once you hit the the front to lower than 75% then they can just Shiva gain so much rage and it's just crazy and hard draw also very important because sometimes you run into a situation where you uh, have a lot of energy especially when you go into free remote but you don't have enough cards so card draw very important interestingly only I can one, co one copy uh, well partly probably because it has a limit meaning you can only play one of these per turn uh, and goal there is really just to gain an advantage of energy just because slowing opponent down um, and I'm not sure what Nyan actually does maybe it's just a filler card but uh, still very strong especially if you get some runes or charms that can deal bleed to the opponent then this will synergize with it so uh, let's just actually see how this game uh, actually plays out um, well how wow let me just look at how how he's uh yeah i've been doing and you can see the win rate is uh, pretty insane it's uh wow well, i mean it's, it's uh, mostly wins and then occasionally some losses but that's how he climbed to over 2000 um in terms of the points so okay let's just see uh how chuck's team actually functions um, and if you watch this video, you probably already know from last season how it works. But let's just see. Um, okay, let me pause the video here. And this is Shux's team. And let's just see. Um, oh, I forgot about to talk about the runes and charms actually. So I might as well talk about it now. So interestingly, it's playing Pendulum Scale on both the back and the front. And the reason being, uh, they do take damage, right? And you don't want the opponent to one hit KO uh, your axes. So that's why Pendulum Scale at least allows this axe to survive even if you do an eggshell, right? It's because sometimes if you don't have it, opponent can get through you with like four energy worth of uh, uh, attacks. And yeah, g this going down is going to be a disaster. So that's why Pendulum Scale actually allows it to, um, to survive. Um, and then of course the tank also, uh, Pendulum Scale, and you can see it's pretty much maxed out in terms of the HP right so it's putting all HP charm um, this one actually I forgot to mention this is very strong uh, with because okay putting it on little piece is interesting is because I think little piece is kind of like a must play putting vulnerable in is very strong and this allows you to gain one rage stack uh, for the whole team so that's pretty strong and you, he has also another two as well right so you can see how many uh, rage stacks that can stack up and um, yeah, it's just insane damage, uh, uh, or uh, insane, r in, in a way, now I understand why uh, Chuck only needs to play one copy, because uh, you do get the charms that can help you getting to the Fury mode, and Fury mode is when you get 10 stacks of rage. Okay, let's just see how the opponent goes. Um, opponent, not the strongest, still Dragon 1, very, uh, still, you know, uh, very, very close to uh, a challenger already and okay typical uh, interesting to play the zen don't really see it that much but yeah little piece very strong let's just see and uh, interesting to get the spear as well so um yeah but grandma's fan very strong hungry bear's very strong as well um and getting quite a lot of good charms as well so opponent definitely not weak at all um yeah getting the charm where kestrel could um you know can potentially disrupt some turns but unfortunately i would say is that um uh, let me show you this confident that's the cleanse and this is this a bit annoying i must say right with the cleanse just because even if you get this arm they can just cleanse it off and then still continue to attack so uh that's why i feel like uh that card uh, confidence a bit too strong and uh fight defense also pretty good uh, but the one interesting to note is that the opponent actually does only have one extra energy which sometimes might not be enough in terms of uh, the race of um, yeah in terms of our racing the opponent and the other thing to note is that it does have two copies of Mavis which is actually not uh, the best in the sense that uh, you do don't really want to have two Mavises up at the same time usually so um, because you might not have enough cards to play out the energy stuff um, 
But okay, so let's just actually play and see how this goes. Okay, vulnerable first, very strong, just to set up for next turn basically. And uh, yeah, let's just see how the opponents goes. Yep, okay, so do guess the... Okay, interestingly, just getting the feather stack. Uh, unfortunately, only get two instead of three. But still, I mean, that's, that's still not bad. And then another vulnerable. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, you can see that the charm uh, does get the rage stack already. Um, let's just see how fast Chuck gets to uh, Fury mode. Um, yep, Mavis. Um, interestingly, I'm not sure if uh, yeah Chuck has a way to deal with the Mavis in this case. And also a bit of a disruption with the uh, blackmail. But I think in this case actually helps out. Uh, and yeah, you can see it's very efficient. Uh, just already killing the back with the, uh, yeah, with the Ronin. Um, doesn't even need to use the. Well, actually, it's a bit of disruption because uh, if Chuck actually draw into an attack card there, then it could have dealt a lot more damage. Um, well, with the Ronin, but uh, sometimes that's what it is. But that's why the opponent actually plays two. Uh, pigeon post to put blackmail in. Yeah, but I think this is where like two, having two mavises might not be the best, but we can see. Let's just see. Um, okay, uh, not having the best of draws, I must say, but yeah, vulnerable, very strong, getting more rage. Okay, getting to eight already in the mid. Um, actually giving up the back um, and just going for the heal. Uh, interesting. So I uh, try to allow the back to survive. So this is an interesting, very interesting play, right? Where he's just sacrificing the back and really uh, just putting all the rage that on the mid and the hope that the mid will be going into um, yeah, the fury mode. And in this case, having two mid visits actually works out because it can use all the energy. So actually, yeah, opponent... Uh, not 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 too bad um, but okay so and then you can see the black male is actually doing its work uh, and the mavis also uh, getting a bit of value but the card draw I think the card draw already seals the deal yep one attack 120 something damage is just crazy but then the black male actually hurts Chuck quite a bit in terms of disrupting the turn um, okay, let's see. And then, yeah, Castro. So this is what I'm saying is that it actually Chuck doesn't have the confident now. Um, but unfortunately, the opponent just doesn't have enough damage to get through the front. And yeah, I mean, the mid is still very healthy. So it's actually going to be a bit tough. Yeah, uh, Chuck still managed to do three attacks. Uh, I mean, three energy worth of attacks. Not managing to get a KO, but opponent is a bit... Well, not just a bit, like pretty far behind, unfortunately, and uh, there's really not much, um, yeah, not much the opponent can do at this point. Uh, probably should have put the Kestrel first, just at least to hope that, um, yeah, just to hope that they don't draw. But yeah, at this point, it's pretty difficult as long as the Shock has two uh, energy, then I think, yeah, two energy of worth of attack, that's GG's. Okay, so uh, that's, that's why you can see actually in this team, right, you don't really need to get into free remote. I mean, uh, you did get into free remote and deal quite a bit of damage. Um, but it's not about all about the um, burst damage as well. So um, let's just watch this game where maybe you can see how uh, potentially we can beat against this kind of team. So let's just see how this one goes. Um, of course, always depends a bit on luck, but still, it'll be good to see how it is possible to get through uh, such a strong team. Um, okay, so again, pause the video a bit here. Let's just double check. I think it's pretty similar. There shouldn't be any differences uh, in terms of the runes and charms. And let's see the opponent. Okay, the so opponent, uh, also very strong uh, front with some rage stuff as well. I think Axie Kiss can be very interesting because Death Mark does allow you to do a lot of damage i feel um one extra energy here and an extra energy here so a typical uh i would say aqua a lot of jinx cut maybe jinx cut would be the key to success i'm not sure trump uh, how that works because okay it does have two axes with trump so maybe that uh, will line up pretty well for the opponent um does get a bit of bubble but not too much so i'm not too sure why uh, you would want to place just one bubble. Um, yeah. 
Okay, and then a very strong attack cast all across the board with the Trump, and I do want to see how this one interacts uh, in terms of uh, getting the damage. And yes, getting these two charms could make a difference in terms of just getting those slight extra damage across. Um, okay, so again, one Mavis is also pretty good. I think one is a good number in terms of the number of Mavis, just because, uh, yeah, usually two is a bit much. Well, of course, depending on your deck, right, you do have a lot of two energy cost card, then that might be pretty good. Like, having Mavis could be pretty good, but okay, let's just see how this game goes. Um, okay, so it's playing a Golda, which is pretty weak at this point, uh, for Chuck. And uh, yeah, let's see how the opponents can play. And you can see the opponent also have very strong runes as well. Okay, so the vulnerable is always the ideal case. And maybe the opponent can actually get through Chuck's uh, front uh, pretty quickly because of the vulnerable. Um, okay, so the eggshell, pretty good, right? So just to deny the uh, vulnerable value. Uh, yeah, that's not too bad. And let's just see. Uh, okay, the opponent getting, I think, Hungry Bird is pretty good. Quite a, quite a lot of damage there. And then, yep, just putting on the uh, feathers. Yep, okay. I don't, didn't get the free energy, unfortunately, but still not too bad. Uh, Chuck, yeah, did not get the Shiva, which is a bit rough, I think. Uh, maybe that's why. Um, Chuck not getting the Shiva, getting all the vulnerable in the front, and missing out the knockout here could be quite rough. Um, okay, let's see. And then opponent do get a pretty good draw. And yeah, getting the Trump is pretty strong. The Trump is really ramping up a bit now. Um, yeah, and then unfortunately, actually, don't even pick up the KO from here. Uh, also, not too sure why uh, I didn't play this first. I, I usually would prefer drawing first just to see what you draw into. Then you have more options. But okay, so here's where the rage comes in. Unfortunately, missing out the knockout does allow. Uh, Chuck to get to uh, the, well, the extra a uh, lot of stacks um, of rage and yeah it's bringing the heal and unfortunately wasting one energy but yep do get to fear mode but I think I don't know if it's a miscalculation but let's get a fear mode and waste a fear mode but these two are getting in, into fear mode but of course the front is going to go down um, and it's really just rely on the uh, now the mid to see whether the mid can do something with his fury mode. So, uh, wasting the fury mode at the back might actually hurt Chuck quite a bit. Um, yeah, maybe it was a bit of a miscalculation. I'm not too sure. Maybe could have saved some cards or something. But let's say here, um, Shiba, yeah, gets the fury mode. Um, yep, yeah, just hit very hard. And then, uh, yeah, okay. So, but unfortunately, it didn't get a card from the front. So, I actually can't really make use of the free mode too much and maybe that actually allows the opponent to come back so drawing a card here um, yeah okay I think ultimately it really comes down to Raven's tactic so I don't think Chuck can get through here with the Raven's tactic um, okay getting not getting into the rage and let's just see how this turn goes I think uh, it is still quite hard to get through the back so uh, but okay opponent does get into two, two well, three very strong attack cards and managing to uh, the the tr um, trump ultimately uh, mattered as well and wow well, very close and it is the raven's tactic that manages to uh, get through and you can see chuck really did the the cards didn't quite line up because if there was another a card that was in the mid instead of the back and can deal a bit more damage with making use of the fury mode then the result could be a bit different but anyway so this is um one of the ways that you can beat the uh uh this kind of team but of course just really rely on we're hoping that they don't draw into the right uh, cards in the right turn but also i think basically it's just to race them right you can see the opponent has a lot of very very strong attack cards in order to just out race them so so this is basically uh it for this analysis so thank you for joining me and um, yeah i'll see you all next time thank you all for watching if you enjoyed my video do consider giving me a like comment subscribe follow me on twitch and use my lenorian code morris Thanks again and have a good one.